Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. With the news of Nelson Mandela's death, there were many who warned that the Mandela that would be remembered might not resemble the real man. This early New York Times headline, for example, suggests that Mandela's was a nonviolent struggle. That's at best incomplete. When he was arrested, Mandela was leading the armed wing of the ANC, which had determined that armed resistance to the violently racist government was necessary. But for some elite media, Mandela's greatness was largely found in his willingness to forgive his enemies. Here's CBS veteran correspondent Bob Simon recalling his own impressions of Mandela's release. The remarkable thing was nobody had seen or heard a word from him in 27 years. So we didn't know if we were seeing a doddering old man who'd been broken by the apartheid regime. We didn't know, even though he'd negotiated with the regime, whether he'd go free and say to his ANC buddies, OK, let's get him and create rivers of blood, or whether he was there to lead the nation. And we didn't know for 24 hours. That night, he gave a long, rambling, boring speech. And we were worried. The next morning, he gave a news conference. And he called on reporters from the pro-apartheid papers. He treated them like friends. And he was eloquent and funny and gracious. And I thought, maybe he can do it. You have to appreciate Simon's candor in his worry that Mandela might create rivers of blood. His applause for Mandela's graciousness toward those on the side that actually did create rivers of blood. Simon's telling us a lot about corporate media's point of view. Well, that theme of Mandela's forgiveness was important to a press corps reluctant to confront the history of U.S. support for apartheid South Africa. The fact that the CIA helped the South African government find Mandela to arrest him was reported over 20 years ago, but it barely registered in the week's media remembrances. Well, not accounting for U.S. complicity with apartheid is one thing, rewriting that history is another. Here's how one NBC report cast the Soweto student uprisings of 1976. The uprising would claim hundreds of lives before it was over, but it would also severely damage the apartheid government and rally world opinion against it. Our own self-interest in an Africa that lives in peace and racial harmony and our abiding commitment to peace and world order permit us no other course. Students protested and were killed, and within a few months, Henry Kissinger was one of many voices opposing apartheid? Not exactly. That Kissinger speech came before a trip to Africa. According to diplomatic cables, he was encouraged to meet with anti-apartheid activists, but he did not. The Reagan administration then pursued a policy of constructive engagement with the racist government. Yes, apartheid was defeated. But the U.S. was on the wrong side of that fight for far too long, no matter what today's media may try to suggest. Well, finally, for the last few weeks, there's been a sense that the U.S. public generally supports the tentative deal on Iran's nuclear program. So it was surprising to see USA Today on December 10th hyping a poll that sends a very different message. According to the paper's poll with Pew, just 32 percent approve, while 43 percent disapprove. Well, that's strange since many other polls found the public supportive of the deal. What explains it? It's pretty simple. Those other polls asked questions that included information about the deal, like this one. Would you support or oppose an agreement in which the United States and other countries would lift some of their economic sanctions against Iran in exchange for Iran restricting its nuclear program in a way that makes it harder for it to produce nuclear weapons? The USA Today poll, though, asked this. From what you know, do you approve or disapprove of the agreement between the United States and Iran on Iran's nuclear program? Turns out, most people don't know all that much. Fully 86 percent told USA Today they'd heard little or nothing about the deal. But they were still asked to weigh in, pro or con. Well, that's a poll that's pretty darn useless. That is, if your intent is to show how people do think instead of hinting what you think they should. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.